Uh, he joined us from the FDA. Um, he was uh, trained both in molecular genetics from Rutgers uh, and biostatistics from Yale after joining the FDA. Uh, Division of uh, Bioinformatics and Biostatistics. Jay has been involved in liver toxicity knowledge base project. Uh, he's very intimately involved uh, in the development of in vitro uh, hepatotoxicity prediction models. Uh, before the FDA, Jay worked in the uh, translational biomarker group at Pfizer and um, over nine years, uh, for over nine years uh, to develop and validate assays employed in cardiovascular disease and oncology clinical trials. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Rob, and <coughs> has a, to, invited me to here to give a, um, the, 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 the results we got from uh, LTKB in vitro um, uh, prediction model. So the, my, talk, my title for my talk is uh, ROS ATP ratio predicts accurate clinical severe drug-induced liver injury in cultures of primary human hepatocytes. So because the uh, because the uh, drug-induced liver injury still a leading cause for the uh, um, FDA approved the drug to uh, have the uh, uh, regulatory action like a withdrawal or a voluntary uh, uh, withdrawal from uh, the market by the uh, pharmaceutical companies. So we uh, try to uh, develop uh, we, we develop a liver toxicity knowledge base. Uh, include several components of this uh, uh, knowledge base. So we have, have uh, published a paper on in the uh, uh, clinical pharmaceutical uh, pharmacology and therapeutics describe this uh, knowledge base. So this knowledge base includes several uh, components. The first one is the clinical data. So we, we collect and annotate the drugs with all the uh, uh, relevant clinical information like a human specific daily, we have above uh, 1,000 drugs. I think now it's, uh, we, we have uh, more than uh, 1,000 drugs. And also we have a side effect and a pseudopedic area and also the uh, histopathology. So all these are clinical data. We also have uh, in silico, we have uh, DILIPS, a uh, daily uh, uh, side effect, and also QSA. And recently we have uh, developed another components called R2, the rule of two that is the high, the high dose, like a, a higher than 100 milligram per day, uh, plus the, uh, uh, the uh, high uh, uh, lipophilicity. If you have a, a meet these two criteria, the drug is usually uh, cause severity. We have a microarray data. Uh, we have about uh, 50,000 arrays for uh, six, six, 600 660 drugs from TGP, it's a Japan uh, uh, microarray project and drug metrics. And also we have, uh, uh, I will focus on the uh, in vitro data. We test about uh, 200 drugs using the uh, rat and a human, a primary hepatitis sites and hepa G2. And lastly, we have some collaboration with uh, ToxCast and uh, we, we are we involved in this uh, uh, consortium effort in the ToxCast 2 and Tox 21. Then we also collect some information about the mechanism. So what the mechanism involved in the drug-induced liver toxicity. So I will focus on the, uh, uh, the in vitro data today and also use the severe daily uh, annotation. So I will give an uh, explanation what is the uh, severe daily. So the uh, drug-induced in uh, liver injury is still a major cause of uh, early termination of drug development and of the uh, uh, FDA regulatory action against the market drugs, of which um, uh, uh, FDA emphasized on the uh, clinical serious delay, we call it severe delay. So it is included, so, so the delay involves a lot of different kind of uh, uh, clinical phenotype and also is uh, only occur in the uh, 10,000 or even 100,000. So we call it idiosyncratic. Not everyone take the drug will uh, leads to the uh, drug induced liver injury. So that, that, that scale 
is way beyond the current scale of the clinical trials. So clinical trials usually involve 4,000 pe person or people. So that way, you, you are not uh, readily to see the drug-induced liver injury in the clinical uh, trials. And also, the, uh, uh, the one paper uh, published in 2006 indicate that the preclinical animal model studies only have 60% concordance uh, with the uh, uh, clinical trials. That indicate that uh, any, even the animal study is not sufficient to predict the uh, drug-induced liver injury. So what are the consequences uh, of these uh, uh, insufficient uh, clinical trials and animal study? We can see the drugs withdraw from market or have a black box warning with limit use due to the severe delay. So here is uh, the uh, list of uh, withdrawal drugs, and here is the uh, black box warning. And even more, uh, uh, so this, this list only, uh, only uh, contained in the, uh, uh, the training set. So, th so that the early uh, in which toxicity screen become, uh, became uh, an attractive alter alter alternative due to the, its cheap cost and only implementation in drug discovery. However, the, uh, the proposed in which approach are not well received due to uh, low sensitivity and the specificity. So the, uh, there are several uh, reasons. First, a system tried to predict all kinds of delay. We will see that's what, why this is a pro problematic. Second one is, usually it's a use of metabolically irrelevant system like uh, 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 HEPA G2. And also, usually uh, they use a panel of the uh, endpoints. So usually it contains eight to 10 endpoints. Anyone hit? They call, call it that toxicity. So no clear insight into the magnets because you combine all the magnets together. And also usually it's a, it's a positive negative uh, assay. No quantitative measure with a dose response relationship. So what, what, why the uh, assist, you cannot use one system to predict all kinds of DILI because the DILI mimics all non-presentation of liver disease. So all the liver disease the daily cause the liver disease mimic all the uh, clinically uh, liver disease like the hepatocellular injury, chronic hepatitis that usually caused by immediate uh, mechanism, cholestasis, and uh, 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 sinusoidal obstruction syndrome, and also the uh, uh, fibrous uh, cirrhosis and the vanishing by uh, bio that syndromes, uh, steatal hepatitis and also steatal. So the, so the steatosis is the accumulation of the lip in the uh, uh, hep uh, hep hepatocytes. So that indicates no in, in, no in vitro system will be likely to prevent them all. So what do we developed? So that, that data is generated from uh, a Solomon. So the company is not, no longer exist. It's bought by another company. But the 2008, we test 200 drugs plus some chemicals, use their system. So they have like an eight, uh, eight, eight, uh, eight uh, uh, endpoints, cell loss, DNA, con uh, DNA, uh, DNA content, nucleosides, apoptosis, DNA damage, mitochondrial function, phospholipids, and steatosis. So we tested uh, 200 drugs and a and the chemicals. So here is the result. So they sent us the uh, index, so they called uh, in vitro, uh, in vivo toxicity risk, predict the risk of in vitro, in vivo toxicity. But you can see there's no uh, prediction, uh, prediction power at all. It's about, uh, so that's the uh, RUAOC. So you, you can see it's, a, it's a, like a random, only 0.5 area at the curve. So we also try to use the uh, IC50 or a single high dose to fit the data, and it also turned out uh, not helpful. So the possible reason is um, because they use the red hepatocytes. So first, uh, uh, possible reason is a species difference. 
we know that the drug, uh, drug, uh, drug metabolism is different between the uh, species. And also it's because they, they use the uh, eight endpoints, so no clear indication of magnetic action with the eight endpoints combined. So we, say, we think of possible remedies is uh, use some more met metabolic co comp competent human hepatocyte based in each system, and also uh, evaluate different endpoints quantitatively for better prediction of severe. So we e evaluate e uh, each uh, endpoint. But uh, b before we're doing this, we believe that the data annotation is critical, critical for the uh, uh, prediction model. I think the, uh, both Rob and uh, uh, Jim indicate uh, whatever the uh, in vitro system we use, we need to involve the biology. So I think, so be because we are a, a bioinformatics group, so we, can, we have the, uh, uh, the expertise in uh, collecting the data and also the annotation, for the annotation. So what is the, uh, so, so the question we ask is, is what in vitro system can produce? The first one you, we need to emphasize that disease or symptom we can get produce in vitro and also we can predict. So that the FDA definition of a severe disease is irreversible liver failure that is a fatal or requires liver transplantation. That's uh, in the clinical, it's uh, acute liver failure. So the, so the uh, uh, Paul Wilkins made a very interesting observation in 2005. He surveyed uh, 18 drugs. It's a withdrawal drug uh, be between the uh, 2000 to 2006. He found only uh, two drugs. It's not, in, it's a, a terbinafin and a valproic acid. It's not involved the hepatocellular injury. Other 16 is involved the hepatocellular injury. So that is the, uh, uh, hepatocellular injury is dominant in the acute liver failure. So we believe that the, because that hepatocellular injury most likely is only involved the human hepatocytes. So we think we can um, annotate a drug, specifically focus on the hepatocellular uh, injury, then we can evaluate uh, individual uh, cellular points. So the hypothesis is a cellular level injury like a hepatocellular injury in acute liver failure is most likely produced and predicted by in vitro cell-based approaches through intracellular mechanism of uh, action. So we, what we do is we start with from a simple um, ATP assay, RS, RS, GSH, and Caspers because we believe this, this endpoint is mechanistically relevant. They link to each other. So, so we, we annotate we develop the uh, criteria for the severe delay. We take into the consideration of the severity, causality, and the frequency of the uh, SDD. So we have uh, three criteria. So the first one drug which will withdraw in either US or Europe or received uh, DNA, uh, FDA black box warning in the US due to the hepatotoxicity. We believe this, this one usually drug in withdrawal or have a black box warning, already, already have incidence of acute liver failure. So we think this uh, is this, uh, severe, severity enough so we can uh, name this uh, as a severity drugs. Then we have uh, considering the, uh, uh, the causality. So the drug with acute liver failure only reported in the US and with uh, adjudic adjudicated causality by either using a standardized causality assessment tool or present in the liver tox website developed in the, the NIDDK. Because the, if we use the standardized causality assessment tool, usually it involves several, at least three clinicians. Clinician. They all agree that the, 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 the acute liver failure really caused by the drug involved. And also for the liver tox um, project in the NIDDK, they also have several uh, clinician or histopathology, pathologists to, 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 to uh, establish the causality. 
So we, we think the causality is also important. Um, the last one is it's, uh, uh, it's only reported in the US and also increase a report, reporting of frequency uh, of accurate incidents calculate as the uh, uh, EBGM. So that's, it's in the VGPS. So we based on these two papers to develop these three criteria. So now we have uh, 80 drugs in the training set include all these uh, 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 severity drugs based on these criteria. Someone is like, uh, this one is only involved black spots warning, but this one is involved the uh, frequency, and uh, this one is involved the both uh, in, uh, frequency and the causality. So we think these are uh, uh, severity drugs. So now what, what's the uh, uh, experiment design? We use the human hepatocytes, and also uh, it's a pre-preserved uh, primary human hepatocytes pool from uh, 10 individual donors, uh, always uh, 80, more than 80% um, uh, of viability. And the cell treated at the seven uh, concentration, we, we try to develop uh, those response uh, curve uh, from a 200 mi micromolar uh, all the way to uh, 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 1.7. 1, 1. So we use uh, 384 plates for uh, treated for uh, 24 hours. Then we use uh, these four endpoints, ATP and the Caspers and the GSH and the uh, reactive oxygen RS. So before we do doing the experiment, we, we try to see um, any um, uh, effects on the uh, clinical phenotype between the uh, severity group and the non severity group. So we can see that uh, here is the uh, portion of uh, different uh, clinical phenotype. And we do the uh, uh, chi square, there is no statistical um, uh, difference between the two groups. So that means the severity is not influenced, even it's dominant by the hepatocellular drugs, but it's not influenced only by the uh, hepatocellular drug. And also, uh, most uh, in vitro uh, tests, they use uh, CMAX, 100 CMAX. The CMAX is the concentration, drug concentration in your blood. But we believe that the, if for the uh, drug candidate, you will, you will not know the uh, uh, CMAX. So what we do is we just use a fixed concentration for all the drugs. So then we use the, uh, um, we see the, uh, if we use the fixed concentration compared to the CMAX, you can see that there is no difference. That means um, uh, the fixed, it's, it's adjustable use the fixed concentration. So then we do the uh, uh, individual assays. But uh, somehow, uh, when we first got the data, we see that the RS ATP suppose, in, so the canaconado is a severe drugs. Anthropocyte is a non severe drugs. You can see the uh, ATP is very nice. Uh, those response curve is decreased because the survey did it cause a cell loss. So you can see nice those response curves. But the puzzle us is that always also it decreased, not increase. Suppose it's increased. Then you can see also uh, uh, the, there's no nothing, uh, not much change here. So we, we think about this, then we decide this, decide use the ratio. So when you use the ratio, you can see the candle canazo has a very nice uh, our, our, our S increase, but I'm not uh, in C in the uh, anthropocyte. And also, uh, if we use the RS alone, there is no prediction power. But if we use the RS ATP uh, ratio, you can see it's a very nice uh, prediction power. So we, s we decided to use that as uh, uh, a new biomarker for the uh, S subsidiary. So also we, take, you, we test a different quantity because we have a seven concentration, so we, we can develop the, uh, uh, those response curve. Then we can use a different quantitative matrix to test what, which one is the, is the best. So you can see the AUC, EC50, and the E7. The E7 is the highest concentration uh, in the treatment. So you can see um, uh, the AUC 
Uh, obviously, it's better than the EC50. So we are used the AUC. So the area and the, the, the dose response curve as uh, quantitative measures. Then you, we compare the four different endpoints. So you can see that our SATP is the best among these four uh, endpoints. So then we wanted to see what these RSATP behave in different uh, uh, drug group. So for, for the uh, severe daily drugs, there are two major groups. One is involved immune mediate mechanism. So it's involved immune cells. Another one is not Im involved immune cells, only the uh, hepatocellular uh, necrosis. So you can see that, that the RSATP is higher than all the other groups. There is no difference between overall daily. So what is overall daily? That it's daily drugs, but it's not caused acute liver failure. So it's still daily drugs. Then we have some non-daily non -daily drugs. You can see there is no static difference between the overall daily and the non-daily. But you can see that uh, there is a statically significant between the uh, non immune mediated severity and uh, also the, for the immune mediated severity, you can see that our SATP still have um, a still uh, a sta a statically significant between the, the uh, immune mediated severity. And, uh, but it's, that situation is not uh, happen in the ATP, you can see the non uh, immune mediated delay not involved in the cell loss. S that indicates somehow uh, other uh, mechanism involving the uh, immune mediate. But it's, uh, they st still can have a slight increase of the RS ATP ratio. So then for the GSH, uh, only the uh, uh, severe delay has uh, a significant difference. So then we, uh, so then we, uh, so first we involve 80 drugs in the training set, then we have uh, 72 drugs in the testing set. So you can see the training set, uh, our SATP is almost the same. So this uh, uh, sensitivity 80, 83, 84. This one's uh, testing set is uh, 85. Then we try to see why the ATP couldn't be uh, better than our SATP, so the ATP only have 67 and the 64 uh, uh, sensitivity, but uh, the specificity is almost the same, 89, 87. So we look at the, the drugs, we can see that all these uh, immune mediated drugs, training set and the testing set, ATP alone, all these are false negative. But uh, for the uh, our SATP, uh, this uh, false negative become a true positive. And also I have a false positive become true, true negative. So we, 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 we see that the RS ATP is performance better than the ATP alone. And also we compare the RS and the GSH. So the, uh, so the GSH is here, st uh, same uh, non immune media severity, immune media severity. Over the daily and non severe daily, you can see that GSH, only the uh, non immune mediated severe daily is a uh, static difference between other, other, other group, group. So then we look at the, uh, the uh, dose response curve. So if we combine all the uh, daily drugs, uh, severe daily drugs, you can see that, that the curve is like this. But if you remove immune mediated drugs, it's a very nice uh, a sigmoidal uh, dose response curve that indicate. Uh, uh, GSH is not involved in the immune mediated drugs. So, the, so the also uh, we can see that the ATP is quite different. And another interesting thing is the ATP is uh, either or either um, you have or not you don't have it. So, if we, for the for the non severe daily drugs, you can see that. The, the average is mean is around 75. But for the severe delay, they almost go to uh, uh, lost all the cells. So that means that it's ATP, it's like a 
in the index of uh, reversib reversibility for the non severe DD drugs, somehow they can reverse. So that so that so the cell loss is still uh, keep like uh, at the seventy five percent, but for the severe DD drugs, it lost almost the same uh, almost the uh, uh, all the cells. So the same thing there, you can see that the RS ATP is performing better in the severe DD uh, annotation or classification, but not in the uh, overall DD classification because you can see all these overall DD. BBDS, SOS, STS, cholestasis, hepatitis, they are not involved, the ROS ATP, but only the uh, severely and the immune mediated severely drugs. So then we look at the uh, uh, therapeutic area. So all these uh, different therapeutic area, uh, here is the uh, 150 drugs. Uh, there's a total involved in a specific uh, therapeutic area and a severe daily. So you can see we have a quite uh, even uh, distribution of the drugs in different therapeutic areas. Then we have a, a drug group. So we, 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 we take some uh, drug, drug group, see uh, how the ROS ATP distribute in the uh, uh, severe daily and non severe daily. So the blue one is uh, non severe daily. Red one is the severe daily. So you can see it's, it's except the two uh, false positive, but uh, still the, these two are uh, cholestatic daily drugs. It's a non, no, non, uh, non uh, uh, of the uh, uh, non daily drugs has a uh, false positive. So we can see that the uh, ROS ATP are, uh, separate uh, severe daily and non severe daily quite, uh, quite well. And also we compare to the uh, in silico. So the first uh, is the early uh, drug development, first the people use the in silico model to predict the, the uh, toxicity, then use the in vitro. So we can see that uh, our two, uh, you have, uh, if you, the dose are larger than uh, 100 milligram, or the uh, locopy, that's a uh, uh, lipid, uh, lipid uh, facility indication, uh, so uh, also the uh, another one is the uh, uh, daily dose and uh, um, uh, inten extensive um, metabolism. You can see that the ROS ATP are performing much better than the in silico model. So I think the uh, ROS ATP has the uh, uh, value to include in the uh, earlier uh, drug, drug disc uh, discovery. And also we look at the. Uh, uh, we, we pull the uh, 10 donors together. Uh, we can see uh, we have a nice uh, uh, balance between the uh, male, female. We have a five male, five female, uh, different age. But uh, also we did indi uh, individual uh, donors. We can, ROS, ATP, you can see uh, uh, individual difference um, uh, among these 10 uh, donors. So here is the uh, severe daily drugs. You can see that uh, uh, here is a, here is a four male, four females. Except the one female, the male usually uh, responds uh, much stronger than the uh, female. Then the, here is the uh, uh, non severe drugs, uh, female and a male. But in the uh, in interesting that uh, we identify uh, one female uh, response uh, very strong to all these uh, uh, non severe drugs. So that. This, this group of drugs are very interesting. This group of drugs uh, is a non severe drugs, but only have acute failure reported in the, uh, Sweden. So if we consider that the Swede Swedish is, is a highly uh, a homogeneous population, even uh, aspirin causes acute failure in Sweden. So what do we, then we group uh, the drugs into uh, three beans. The first beans, has a drug caused hepatocellular necrosis, then mix and acetyl hepatitis. Usually these are involved in the severe daily drugs. And the second thing is a cholestasis, steatosis, immune mediated daily drug, and other severe daily drugs. So these are still our daily drugs. Then we have a spin three, it's all non severe daily drugs. drugs. You can see it's a distributed, very nice, separate, uh, the uh, uh, 
the, the uh, close score uh, war is test, the p, -p, p value is less than uh, uh, 0 0.001. So we, we think we can use this uh, Bing to develop a screen uh, scheme. So what do we propose that uh, you, if you have a candidate drug assay along with the reference drugs, first being we list some drugs, second being we also list some drugs, and the third being. So the, if the RS ATP run, uh, the, the, the value is in, in run, uh, it's, a, it's into this bin, usually it's unlikely uh, DD drugs, and uh, you can proceed to the uh, 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 further uh, development. But the second being, it's possible, involves some uh, DD type, so you need to prioritize. But the first thing is highly probable. Um, so you can consider to terminate uh, the drug development. So here is the uh, um, James, uh, James Kelly. Uh, the, uh, we send the 12 drugs. So what do we run the RSHP? We run the, is a convention. Uh, it's a separate uh, assay. Then we combine the value together. So to Jim, uh, they develop a um, very nice uh, multiplex assay. We send them uh, 12 drugs. Some are severity drugs, some are non-severity drugs. You can see nice um, uh, correlation between the multiplex and also the conventional uh, method. So now we go back to the, uh, uh, Rob, Rob mentioned that the, uh, the weakness uh, right now the, for the in vitro is lack of standardization. So we happen to uh, have a three a large sets of uh, drug tested in a different uh, platform, even uh, cell type. So we have uh, IVA, that's uh, uh, the, the work I, I just described. We use uh, human hepatocytes, conventional assay. Solomon is a high content assay. I mentioned they use uh, either red hepatocytes and also the uh, hepa G2 cells. NCGC is a quantitatively uh, high throughput screen. So we have uh, three, eight, 308 drugs in the NCGC screen and uh, 152 in the IVAL screen and the Saluma has uh, 145. So we happen to have uh, 81 drugs uh, overlap. Um, it's, it's tested among the, uh, three different systems. So then we did the uh, correlation. So you can see that here is the uh, technical replicates for the Saluma. So only Saluma run the technical, technical replicates. They run the uh, same sets of the drugs in two different plates or even uh, two different days. So you can see that the, the, the technical replicates is highly correlated. It's like a 0 0.7 to 0 0.9. So then if you see that, see, the, see that the, the correlation between the platform and the cell, even the same cell line, all the same G2 um, from um, NGC, from the uh, Solomon, you can see a very low um, uh, correlation, like only uh, 1.1 1 to 0.2. And uh, also then uh, if you compare the different species, uh, human between the human and the rat, it's about, it, it, about the 0.5, it should be here, 0.5. So that indicates even we are using an uh, in vitro system to predict uh, toxicity, there is no, uh, very less uh, concordance between a different platform, different uh, uh, me, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the cell lines or cell types. Um, so that's why we uh, uh, propose uh, in vitro toxicity assay quality control consortium. Uh, the goal is to use in vitro system to replace, reduce, and refine. So it's called 3R, animal use in the drug development. However, the current in vitro system have not met the uh, expectation due to the low um, reproducibility. So what the hypothesis is a comprehensive standardization uh, quality control of existing in vitro assay with uh, well annotated drugs, the clinical phenotypes, and the relevant uh, re uh, related uh, uh, mechanisms 
for the fully max maximize the usage of in vitro system in earlier drug development. So we have a, a, a couple of a specific arm. The first arm is to identify and prioritize the current available in vitro uh, phytotoxicity cell-based system like ATPGSH, RS, and to develop a validation report and a standardized a standard operation of procedure on select the system with the 24 well-defined DD drugs. The second uh, specific arm, a physically performed validated assay with the criteria developed in the first stage across at least 10 different sites and to analyze the data generated and to evaluate uh, reproducibility and the repeatability of the assays. So the outcome, what is the outcome from this consortium we believe that the results from this project will help FDA to develop the guideline on how these assays, in vitro assays, can be incorporated in the early drug development. And also the lesson learned from the DILI related can, uh, assays can be further applied to other uh, to, uh, organ toxicity assay as well uh, as uh, uh, drug um, efficacy assay. So summary, uh, using um, a quantitative measure of dose response relationship and the assay endpoint with a clear underlying mode of action, well uh, annotated clinical uh, DD type and the uh, vigorous validation method, RSATP, uh, was identified as a good biomarker to predict the drugs with the potential to cause severe DD. And also based on the intensity of severe DD drugs response in the RSATP assay, the drugs were grouped into the three beings, and each being is associated with a specific data types and associated with severity. So the, a scheme of early screening is proposed to first distinguish the severe daily drugs from the other drugs, and the second to prioritize the drug candidates based on the data type. And also the uh, um, in vitro cell-based toxicity assay quality control consortium is proposed uh, for research community to com com comprehensively evaluate the existing methodologies to develop the standardization of in vitro based cell based assay for the uh, fit for purpose use in early drug development. Here is the acknowledged uh, LTKB group in the NCTR FDA. Wei Datong is the uh, director of the division. Uh, Qing Wei is a uh, uh, statistician, and Zhu Cao and uh, um, all these people's uh, by informatic petition. And also the, uh, the company we work with, the IBA, Avery is the CEO, and uh, all these uh, technicians help to uh, perform the assays. Promega, uh, Jim Carey, uh, Dong Bing Ma, they perform the uh, uh, multiplex. Jim proposed the uh, multiplex assay, and uh, uh, Dong Bing um, uh, performed the assays. And also we have uh, uh, two uh, clinicians uh, and, uh, and uh, work with us to uh, verify the, uh, uh, verify the uh, uh, clinical phenotype. Thank you. <laughs> Any question? Hi, Robert. So, is this a good question? I think also, Jim. Um, right now, I, uh, we don't have a uh, good explanation um, right now for the uh, ATP. We just take it as, as it. Uh, we believe that in the case uh, cell loss, but uh, we would like to uh, follow up with the, uh, the live, maybe the live assays, just compare the ATP with the uh, cell, real uh, cell viability. That's something we, we probably will do that. Excuse me. I want to, maybe I don't 
sins is unknown. I'm, I'm still naive with regard to how the FDA would handle a new drug. Are you basically proposing that once an IND application has been filed and uh, preliminarily approved or at least accepted to then go to the ROSATP assay uh, for additional analysis in-house by LTKB? Is that a, approximately what would happen? Uh, we propose that uh, because you can see the trend uh, in the Europe, uh, it's it's already moved forward. Use the in vitro assay to replace the animal model we call the So, I think the FDA also considering this uh, 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 development to use the in vitro assay to replace the animal studies. But right now. We don't have a good uh, guidelines. So, so what we have, what we try to do is, we try to do predict, uh, develop some prediction model, and uh, help the help the. Uh, so, we have a, a FDA have a mechanism called the voluntary uh, data submission. So, you, you 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 from the beginning like a pharmacogenomics. So the the voluntary data submission. Uh, starting with the uh, pharmacogenomics data. So the FDA has not required you to include pharmacogenomics data in your uh, new drug application. But, but if, you want, if you believe that pharmacogenomics data can help you to get a drug approved, you can voluntarily, um, I was involved, so you can voluntarily in, uh, submit the data. So the FDA can take a look and do, do the independent analysis then the, 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 the purpose is for the FDA and also for the uh, uh, drug, drug, drug companies. So we learn the lessons from this new technology. So right now, we, 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 we do the in vitro assay. It's the same thing. We believe that in the future, uh, uh, in vitro uh, assay will replace the animal studies. But uh, it's, it's too early. We, we can say that. Uh, we still need to learn, learn, uh, learn from this process. So, so go back to your question is, our SATP, we believe that right now we have uh, used 152 drugs, well annotated. We see the correlation. We cannot say we develop a prediction model. We see the good correlation between the uh, our SATP increase and also the uh, uh, SDD, survey DD. So we will encourage um, the industry, if you can incorporate these assays into your early drug development, you can share the data with us. Then we can both, uh, we learn the lesson and we move this forward. The, the ulti ultimate uh, purpose, the goal is help FDA to develop a guideline how to use the in vitro assay in the early drug development. So that's a one try. We say, okay, we, we, now we, we, we see this uh, good correlation. And also, we also uh, incre uh, encourage um, uh, pharmaceutical companies, if you have uh, failed drugs in the early development, if you can donate to, to the FDA, we can test it. And also, because you already have animal data, associated with these uh, failed drugs, we can see how correlate between the in vitro assay and the uh, animal study on these uh, failed drugs. And then if those were, if the uh, ATP, the ROSATP ratio were um, encouraging, what would you do with such a drug? Put it out of the, with the, with the warning label? Yes, we will say, okay, your application should include OS, ATP, and ratio, or other endpoints for the uh, in vitro assays. Could I ask one more question? Sure. I don't want to monopolize this. <laughs> um, the uh, what about the other alternative being used in Europe with regard to? Um, a drug like PTC-124, 
uh, which uh, to my, again, limited understanding is that uh, it's been given conditional approval for the muscular dystrophy studies. I guess meaning that the drug will be used on patients, but only patients entered into the study so that no data will be lost in the use of that drug in the early studies. Uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with the, uh, uh, what the, uh, they are using, like, but I, I know that the, uh, last year, uh, the Europe okay. put uh, 32 uh, million uh, euro. They formed um, a consortium called the MIP, MIP DILI, uh, mechanism involved uh, uh, prediction. So they are, they are surveyed all the existing uh, in vitro assays to see which one can be used to, to predict the DILI. So that's, uh, they move on uh, um, on these issues. But uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not aware of any uh, uh, clinical studies involve the, uh, the drugs of patients. Thank you. You're welcome. I think that the use of uh, human cells from uh, donors could be very difficult as far as uh, other laboratories uh, uh, getting into this. I wondered if you have considered correlating your results with other species than rodents. You just said the rodent data, rodent uh, liver cells were not effective. Uh, but have you considered other species, pigs, cows, sheep, something else to see if you can get similar results with species that might be more readily available for others to use? Uh, the data I didn't uh, present today, we actually run the uh, uh, monkey, dog, rat, human, hepatitis 2. So we run these, these five different uh, um, uh, type, cell type. The monkey is most closely to a human. But the red, you can see only like a 0.5 a correlation. It's not good enough. Good enough. But the monkey is very close. Monkey. Uh, yeah, but the other hepat species were not. Not. Dog, uh, dog, and the red is not r really a correlate. So can you comment on? whether uh, the oxygen concentration or cell culture condition, how, how would this factor affect the correlation between the cellular model and the, the, the in-animal model? OK, that's a good question. I don't think anyone right now has uh, these um, answers. Because uh, for the animal model, you, you go through your first hit, it, of course, a liver. So you have a drug metabolism. So wh that's why we wanted to mimic uh, that situation, use the human, uh, the, the hepatocytes, not even human. You can also use the red. But I think there is a definitely some difference between the in vivo, in vitro, even you uh, mimic the conditions. Uh, I have another question. Uh, that is, uh, so small RNA that are being considered for drug candidate and many of them are modified, and they they go to liver fairly readily. Yes, um, we are uh, 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 bi uh, chemical biological interaction will have uh, a special issue um, on May on the uh, hepatotoxicity. Um, uh, our group has a paper submit use the uh, uh, circulating microRNA as a predictor for the DILI. Yes, we did some work, and also we. We, we have uh, 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 next generation sequence data on the uh, microRNA. So how, see how it correlates with uh, DILIs. So do the RNA uh, drug candidate cause liver injury? RNA drug. Is what is known? the RNA? Micro RNA or uh, oh, so use the microRNA RNA. as, as a, a therapeutic agent. OK. We, we haven't tested. We, have, we don't have any uh, idea. Any other questions? Oh, sure. 
you showed towards the end a poor correlation between different platforms um, and sort of the predictive outputs. Um, what do you think the main factor is or main factors are that contribute to that lack of correlation? Uh, first, I believe the HEP G2 because uh, we, we also have a, a data of uh, HEP G2. So the HEP G2, uh, the response is very low, not uh, like a human hypothesis. So if you, the response is low, you actually introduce a lot of uh, variance. So everything, if, if, if it all are on the baseline, you of course see a huge, uh, big uh, variance. So that's uh, one reason. Another one is the, uh, I think the platform difference, run, like uh, Robert said, uh, people run different, different ways. Um, so I think these are uh, probably the uh, reasons we saw this. But if, if we look at the, uh, the uh, the yeah, technical replicates very tight. So the technology itself, I think it's not the problem. Uh, but, uh, but the problem is the way you run the assays, the reagents, the, uh, the, the, the cell types you use. Probably, uh, because I think that the, the company, they all do um, solo uh, uh, validation. So they, if they sell the kits, they, they make sure that the, you can repeat it. But uh, uh, if we use the different high content, because the uh, uh, NCGC used the uh, high throughput screen, and the Saluma used high content. So the, the way detection detected, the, the signal detection is different. 